Hi, everyone. I'm Marley Kalt. Um, I'll be talking about how we are making social media data um, accessible to researchers um, through a partnership between a data archive and a tech company, uh, Meta. Um, so I am a project manager at the Social Media Archive at ICPSR, or SOMAR. Uh, so I'll provide a very brief introduction to SOMAR and uh, what we do. Um, I'll talk about some of the considerations in social media research, why um, social media research can be so difficult uh, in the present time, and then I'll focus on our partnership with Meta and how we are working with platforms to make social media data available for research. So a bit about SOMAR. Um, we are a data archive for data from social media and data about social media. Um, so we accept data from individual researchers who want to share their data um, to get credit behind their publications and get more citations, um, as we just heard about. Um, and we are also working with platforms to share larger um, data sets. So I have our website here, socialmediaarchive.org, um, and a few screenshots, just what our website looks like. And we are relatively new. We launched um, a year and a half ago, uh, January 2023, to start accepting data. Uh, but even though SOMAR is new, we are part of um, a very old organization called the Interuniversity Consortium for Political and Social Research, or ICPSR. And this is a social sciences data archive that has been around for um, over 60 years now. Um, there's some more information on the slide, um, and we are based at the University of Michigan. So social media research uh, is difficult. Um, I would say that all research is probably difficult, but focusing on social media today. And I want to share a few of the uh, considerations that researchers have and concerns that make this research so difficult today. So one concern is privacy. Um, both researchers and social media platforms are concerned with protecting the privacy of social media users. So we all know we create a new social media account and we have that long uh, terms of service document that will say what this platform is going to do with our data. Maybe it will be used for research, maybe it will be used um, to give us targeted advertisements, uh, maybe they're gonna sell our data, but it's very common that we don't always read all of that uh, document. I certainly don't. Um, so we want to make sure that to the extent possible we are protecting user privacy, since users might not realize the uh, reach and exposure that their posts could have, especially if something posted 10 years ago is now part of um, a research project today. So we want to make sure that um, these posts can uh, stay protected, especially around sensitive um, topics. Another consideration is around um, publishing and sharing. So we've just heard that there are uh, funder mandates and other requirements that um, require researchers to share their data. However, the data providers, um, especially for social media data, often have requirements that say you can't share the data um, or you can only share under specific conditions. Um, so for researchers, this requires um, you know, a balance to uh, adhere to the data provider requirements that you're only sharing um, for research purposes or you're sharing in a way that protects user privacy, um, but you also have to meet your funder requirements um, to share replication data behind your publications. Um, social media research requires an uh, amount of technological resources, so for collecting and analyzing data, social media research can often also garner uh, very large data. So this can require a lot of computing resources to store and analyze very large amounts of data. And going along with that, there's human resources as well. So there's the time it takes to collect data um, and the coding or programming knowledge that it takes to use um, the technology where social media data is made available, whether that's through um, APIs or web scraping or other technology. Um, this requires a lot of specialized knowledge. And um, SOMAR aims to help with all of these considerations. So we provide a way to um, share and access data through a uh, secure data enclave. So we can protect user privacy. We can make sure no data um, is getting out without um, 
you know, approval and a disclosure uh, review. Um, we are a data archive, so we can help with publishing your data and again, sharing it in that restricted way that can um, adhere to data provider requirements. Um, and we provide technological uh, resources through uh, data storage and computing resources. And we also can provide some coding assistance um, as well to help with uh, some of that, those human resource uh, considerations. So amongst all these considerations, um, we are seeing changes in the social media research landscape. So social media data is becoming uh, more restricted. We see many social media platforms are announcing changes um, or shutdowns to their APIs where researchers were previously uh, able to gather data. So in the last uh, couple years, we've seen Twitter, Reddit, um, and Meta announce changes to um, APIs and the way that they provide data. Uh, so whether that's through shutdowns um, or just making the data more expensive uh, to access. So Reddit and um, Twitter, now X, um, have announced uh, pricing models to charge um, users for taking their data. Um, and in some cases, um, these platforms do allow free access to researchers, but there are often limits on how much data um, you can actually take out um, with that free researcher access. So that brings me to what SOMAR is trying to do to help keep this data accessible for researchers, and that is through partnering um, with social media platforms to share data in a uh, privacy-protecting way. So we have a partnership um, with Meta um, around a couple of their data sets, um, but uh, the largest one right now is the Meta Content Library. So our partnership with Meta started um, a couple years ago with the US 2020 Facebook and Instagram election study. And this um, followed a very traditional data archiving model where uh, Meta and some academic partners completed a study around the elections um, in the US in 2020. And they had some data. And then they have given that data to SOMAR to preserve and share uh, for research purposes. Um, so we have uh, data behind about four publications now, and we'll continue releasing data as those publications uh, are released. Uh, but then last fall uh, came about the Meta Content Library. So Meta Content Library um, is a data set that provides near uh, real-time uh, updates of data from public posts, uh, pages, events, uh, and groups from Facebook and Instagram. And there are two ways to access Meta Content Library. There's a web-based user interface where you can go and search the data. Um, and then there's an API for programmatic access. Um, and the role that SOMAR plays um, in this partnership with Meta Content Library is um, handling the application process. So researchers do have to apply for access to this data uh, so that we can make sure that they are using it for research purposes. Um, so SOMAR does all of the applications and approvals. Uh, and then we also provide access to the API inside our virtual data enclave. So the web-based user interface part is on um, Meta's uh, websites and platforms, uh, but then the API is accessed within SOMAR's um, data enclave infrastructure. Um, so the overarching goal of this partnership is to provide uh, access to social media data for researchers uh, in a way that protects user privacy. Um, and I want to share a bit about the different stakeholders in this partnership and what we bring to this partnership um, and what we all get out of it. So starting with Meta, uh, Meta has the data that uh, they want to share. Um, Meta also has privacy concerns, so they were looking for a way to share all of this data in a way that will protect user privacy. Um, and Meta also has funding. Um, so Meta has provided funding to SOMAR, um, not just for Meta Content Library, but to support all of our work. Um, but I do need to highlight this as an important aspect of making um, this work possible. Moving on to SOMAR, um, we have the infrastructure. Um, so that uh, secure data enclave that I've mentioned, we have um, that available in a cloud-based um, environment, um, we have data storage infrastructure, um, and we have the resources to sort of bring the API into um, our enclave. 
and we also have expertise in sensitive data. Um, so I mentioned we're part of ICPSR, which has a long history of providing access to uh, survey data that has identifiable information um, and uh, access restrictions. So we can build off of ICPSR's um, expertise in protecting uh, the privacy of social media users just as we protect the privacy of sur survey participants. Uh, and another important um, stakeholder in this partnership are the data users themselves. Um, so of course the users get access to the data here, um, but they also get the third party vetting coming from SOMAR. So we hope having SOMAR handle all of the applications um, can bring in some transparency um, and uh, have this vetting that is free of any commercial or business interests. Uh, and we also provide computing resources um, and publishing resources. So using Meta Content Library API is completely free to access um, and the compute is free as well. So you can have very large amounts of data, um, analyze using uh, machine learning models um, and that uh, those costs are all covered. Um, so I want to highlight um, as well a few of the challenges as any partnership um, does have challenges. Um, so one challenge for us has been the technology. Um, our uh, virtual data enclave originally was built to house relatively static data sets. So you put data in, researchers analyze it, um, and then it's done. That's all that needs to happen, it just stays there. Uh, but with the API, we are actually having to open up our data enclave to bring data into it. Um, while making sure that no data can get out. So that has been um, a challenge to figure out those permissions, um, as well as has really just had us rethinking what it means to um, work with a secure data enclave and um, have data in that environment. Another challenge uh, has been the pace of work. So anyone who has worked in academia knows that academia moves very slowly, uh, while the corporate world um, especially the tech world moves much quicker. Um, so that has been one challenge to set expectations around the differing paces um, of our environments. Um, and we've also found some uh, challenges working with the pace of our users. So we have users who are journalists um, or doing real-time monitoring of social media that moves, um, again, at a much quicker pace than the academic research that we're used to. So that's been a challenge to navigate and make sure that we can accommodate um, user needs and uh, the, the pace that they work at. Um, another challenge is communication. We heard in a keynote uh, talk today about communication and the need to over communicate in uh, collaborative partnerships. So that's something that um, we're always working on to improve. We have uh, regular meetings. We have regular email updates sent at the same time. Um, every week, so um, communication just for any partnership is always top of mind um, for us to make sure that we aren't missing anything and we're all on the same page. And finally, um, seeing public data as sensitive data. So uh, all of the data in Meta Content Library was posted publicly on Facebook or Instagram. Um, however, we do view this as sensitive data um, that requires care um, and uh, some restrictions to make sure that this data doesn't get out. So it's been um, a challenge just to, um, uh, to explain and demonstrate why public data should have these access restrictions and how we're trying to make the data as open as possible while again, um, you know, treating it as uh, the sensitive data that it is. Um, and with that, thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. Hi, um, I used to work on a social listening tool that used like the Twitter API, and I get that it's been really hard, like going around all the new pricing and everything like that, like CrowdTango going extinct soon. And I was wondering how exactly you provide the access, for example, to the meta API, the, the archives. So how exactly does it, does it work? How 
can one apply? Um, thank you. So I have not linked the uh, link to our application form here, but we have it on our website, and Meta also has um, information that links to it. So we have um, a form. We use a platform called InfoReady to collect our applications. Um, so you'll fill out all the information. Um, you know, asks for your personal, you know, research professional information, um, information about your research project. Uh, and then we will review it. Um, and then in the way that access is provided, we have a, the Enclave is a virtual desktop. So you log in. Um, we have a Linux machine that you'll log into. You'll have your own instance. So every research group has um, their own individual machine. It could be one researcher. It could be 20 researchers who all have access to this uh, same machine. Um, and from there, you have free reign to query the API. We provide. Uh, Python, R, and Stata. So you can use um, either of those languages to query the API and analyze the data. To what extent is the privacy of the data implicated in your research? You say the privacy of the data? Um, so um, we try and strive for complete user um, privacy. So the data um, in Meta Content Library is mostly anonymized. Um, I believe there's some public figures who are identifiable, um, but that's anonymized on Meta's side before it goes like, into the API. Um, so most users, you won't be able to see like who they are on a post unless they're like a business um, or a designated creator or verified account. Um, and then inside the Enclave, um, no data can be removed. So if somebody does have a chart or a graph or something that they want to put in their publication, um, staff from SOMAR will review it and make sure that it's not you know, having someone's name in there that shouldn't be in there, or having some of the text um, of a post that shouldn't be released. So also a privacy-related question, and, and thank you so much for, for attending to those details in your talk. I, I think it's important. Um, so obviously this is not relevant to, to the Meta API necessarily, but to some of your statically archived um, data sets, how do you balance a static data set with privacy concerns, especially like the concept of like the right to be forgotten and posts that may no longer be public but are still available in a static um, data set that's archived? Uh, that's something that we're still working out. So right now, um, we're not going through and checking the static data sets to see what is still available. Um, so we do have um, some data sets that could have data that have been taken down, um, but we're still providing all of that um, inside the data enclave if there's any identifiable data. Um, so we do have some data that is uh, public use and available for download right from our website, uh, but that's all aggregate data. Thank you. Uh, I appreciated how you talked about the different points where humans are reviewing different elements. I was wondering if you can talk at all about any automated or testing frameworks that SOMAR has created for a near real time data stream as opposed to just what's being done on your partnership side. Um, so we do have some automated tests um, that make sure that the API is still working um, and things haven't broken. So we have a data engineer on our team who has built um, tests just to make sure all of the endpoints are working um, and we're receiving data into the Enclave and those run at regular intervals and alert us if something breaks. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, the question is very quick. Are journalists allowed to access the archive at all? Are they considered researchers or? Um, yes, journalists um, can access or apply for Meta Content Library if they're from a nonprofit um, uh, 
publication or organization. So it's open to academic researchers and then nonprofit um, researchers or journalists. One last question. If not, we, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I actually have a follow-up on that question. Um, so, do journalists qualify as like non nonprofit, or I, I didn't understand your answer. Sorry. Um, it depends on the publication that uh, the journalist works for. So, if you work for a nonprofit publication, um, yes, you would qualify. If you work for a for-profit. Um, publication, then you would not be eligible. 